I'm here at Loxley Fisheries near Sheffield and I'm here today to put some of my kit through its paces. When we're fishing competitions, you know, you don't always want to be trying things out. You really want to take your A game to those matches. And it's sessions like this where I put my kit through its paces because it's nice to know what it's capable of. I picked a peg where I've got some really inviting features. I'm going to be fishing a pellet feeder tight to those features and I just want to see if I can hook and land some of the hard fighting fish that inhabit this lake. There are carp here, there are also barbel as well. I don't know what we might be hooking but it's just a way of finding out what my kit is actually capable of. I'll talk you through the setup, I'll talk you through the bait and hopefully we're going to be hooking some hard fighting fish. Well the main reason for today is just to kind of give you an idea of what this kit is capable of. I'd never film these sessions normally, usually I just obviously find out what I need to find out, record it and then when I go home I know which bits of kit are ideal for certain scenarios. However today I thought I'd bring the cameras along for you just to give you an idea of what these hooks are capable of and how I would tackle this sort of a situation because let's face it you know most people don't get the opportunity to go out there trying things out like I am fortunate enough to be able to go out and do so I'm going to talk you through the setup I'll talk you through the uh, the kit that I'm going to be using I'm going to prepare the bait nothing fancy about the bait today it's really it's a really cheap bait bill for today and hopefully there's going to be some fish out there underneath those lilies waiting for us now the setup that I'm using today, the first thing I've got to say is a bit of a disclaimer and that is that I'm using the new Horizon Pro 3.3 meter slim. Now this rod isn't designed for big hard fighting carp and barbel, okay? I just want to try it out because I know you guys can't go out there and try it, so I'm going to be trying it for you. This rod isn't designed for this, but I'm going to see what it's capable of, okay? So that's what I'm using, 3.3 meter. I'm casting about 25 to 28 meters, something like that, so I don't need a long rod. I've caught coupled with a 3000 reel. Any 3000 reel is balanced beautiful on a nice 11 foot rod, okay? Usually I like six pound mainline. And today, because I'm fishing near snags or near those lilies, I'm going to be using eight pound, and that's horizon line. So it's eight pound main line. Okay, no shot leaders, nothing fancy. And then all I've got that set up to is a nice, simple, free running pellet feeder. Okay, now these are really, really simple to use. The great thing with pellet feeders is that you can feed a little bit of bait and present your hook bait right in there, right where the fish has got to go to get your feed pellets okay now it's just a free running rig which is complies to all fishery rules so it's free running these are dead easy to change as well it's got a quick change um, stem on there if I do want to change the weight of it this particular one is 28 gram okay that's all I need for today it's a small one and then I've got a quick change um, bead there so I can just quickly and easily change the hook length and all I'm going to kick off with is this is a size 12 um, this is the MXC3 hook, which I'll show you in a moment. This is one of the things that I'm trying out today. I want to see what these are capable of. Okay, I'll tell you why in a moment. And I've just got a little bait pin on there. You can see how I've tied that hair rig. Okay, these are home self-tied hair rigs. These are the ones that I use. And I've just got a little bait spike on there or bayonet on there where I can just put little wafters on there. Uh, mini wafters or you know the normal size ones. Boilies aren't allowed on this fishery. So I'm just going to be kicking off with mini wafters. And that is it. You know brilliant setup you, you know if you're struggling with tandles and you don't want to know what kind of kit to use on these sorts of fisheries you can't go far wrong with a bit of kit like this because it's just tangle free and because it's um it, it's it, it's a self-hooking way of fishing it just means the fish are basically going to hook themselves assuming you've got everything set up right so that is the setup nothing fancy so i'm just going to quickly show you the bait that i'm going to be using And just a final word about hooks. This is something I've been getting asked about a lot recently and this is one of the things that I'm here to try out. Today I'm using the MXC3 hooks, okay? They are eyed and they're barbless, all right? Perfect for commercial fisheries and uh, these are labelled up as strong. Now that's one of the things that I want to test today. I'm going to be fishing close to these lilies. We do have a stronger pattern, that's the extra strong and that is what I'd use if I was struggling with all the other patterns and as you can see it's a thick gauge hook. Now this is one of the things that I'm here to try out today for my own peace of mind. I need to know if I need an extra stronger hook that is the one that I'll select. Forget those. I want to know what the strong version is capable of because I'm a big believer that if I can get away with a slightly lighter hook than a heavy gauge hook, then I will do that. 
but obviously I need to know what these are capable of and what kind of uh, pressures you can um, put them under to make sure you're going to land some of these hard fighting fish. Now the number one bait for today is going to be pellets, micro pellets and I'm not using anything fancy. There are so many different pellets out there you can spend a fortune on your bait. This fishery allows you to use your own pellets and that's exactly what I'm doing. These are just copping type pellets, the ones that you see at loads and loads of different fisheries. Just cheap pellets, okay? I don't think for this sort of fishing you need anything fancy. We're fishing with a pellet feeder, so as long as they're soaked correctly, they're gonna stay in the feeder okay anyway. You don't need to add anything special to them. They don't need to be special sticky pellets or anything like that. So it's always nice when you can come and catch fish and just keep your bait build down a little bit. So that's all I'm gonna to use today. So there's no fancy gadgets or ways of preparing them. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna soak them and for how long. And then for the hook, all I've got here is a nice, selection of hook baits just like what we all carry there's some wafters in there some mini wafters there's some banded pellets and that sort of thing and i'm going to kick off with a mini mini wafter and just find out if there's a few fish out there but first of all i'll just quickly show you how i soak the pellets so you don't need anything fancy for preparing pellets as long as they're soaked correctly okay so all i've got is as you can see just some normal pellets nothing fancy about these these are just ones in fact they're probably left over from one of the fisheries that i've been to Okay, and all I'm going to do is, I'm going to soak the whole bag today. I've got loads more in my bag. So they're the dry pellets, and all you simply do is cover them with water. I usually do this at least half an hour before I start fishing. Make sure that they're all soaked, or make sure they're all covered with water. And the general guideline is one minute per mil. Simple as that, it's the best guideline. I don't know who suggested or said that years ago as a guide, but for me, that's the best guide on all pellets. You're better off underdoing them than overdoing them, because once you've soaked them too much, you can't bring them back, or it's very, very difficult to do that. Whereas, if you soak them and it's not quite long enough, well, you can just add more water to them and give them a little bit longer. It's always better, okay? As you can see, there's one or two floating as well, but obviously we'll take those off once they're soaked. So I'm gonna leave these for exactly two minutes from when the water went in, then I'm gonna drain the water off and then just give it about 15 minutes and then they should be okay, ready to fish with. really well at the moment I haven't seen any big fish yet or any signs of any big fish I'm catching skimmers and bream which is obviously is great to do but obviously I want to see if I can latch into one or two bigger fish I'm now fishing a little bit even closer to that um, that bed of lilies but I'm getting indications there are lots of fish moving around on the surface I'm getting line bites all the time but with this sort of a method just like fishing with a method feeder and a pellet feeder it's a self hooking way of fishing so don't be picking up on all those little indications. Just sit on your hands, as they say, and just make sure that the fish is on, you know. You don't get bites on a method like this, you know. The fish are either on or they're off. And when it goes, you can tell when one's hooked, okay. So just only pick up when you're sure that there's a fish on. I've been asked before why I have two tubs of pellets on my side tray. Basically what I've got here, because I'm normally fishing matches, I like to do one batch of pellets that's gonna last me the session and that's what that batch is, okay? But as you can imagine, throughout the current duration of the session, these pellets will dry out. So what I like to do is have a separate tub next to that. Sometimes it's a smaller tub than this. Sometimes it's, it's normally just a one point bait tub. 
when I've got more baits on here just so it doesn't take up more space and what I actually do is that is the batch that I'm actually constantly working okay so they will dry out but this is the batch that I'm constantly using so I can quickly and easily just add a little bit of water to these as they dry out just to make sure they're the perfect consistency and if I do want to start trying glugs and that sort of thing then I can just try adding glug just to that one little batch because if it doesn't work then it means that I've still got my normal pellets there where I might want to continue using them as they are or I might want to add a different glug to another batch of pellets hopefully that makes sense Well, that was a proper fish interestingly it's not um, it's actually broke me on the hook length I'm fishing obviously I'm fishing the size 12 hooks but I'm fishing to all 19 hook length and it had actually broke actually on on the knot itself so um, I think there's plenty of black backbone left in the rod you could see the bend in the rod on the other camera but um, and obviously the hook stood up to that pressure but it's it's the knot that's gone um, so I was a little bit disappointed to lose that one but it just shows that there's there are one or two round there there's loads of fish cruising about i haven't seen any fish caught yet but there's got to be some fish underneath those lilies so i'm just going to keep dropping that pellet feeder as close to them as i possibly can get and hopefully we're going to hook one or two more and hopefully we're going to land them it's actually like a jacuzzi out there now right where my feeder is i'm getting line bites all the time so i'm going to film those for you on this because i can zoom in better but there's the tip I'll just see if we can show you the line bites. Bit of double filming for you. You can see the tip. Look at the tip moving. There's fish out there. And if I zoom in over my bait, you can see the indications on the tip there. But have a look at this, right where my feeder is. Just look at how many bubbles are coming up there. My feeder is just to the left of the point of where those lilies are look at the bubbles what are coming up there right on my feeder now, i don't know if they're skimmers I don't know if they're bream i am catching skimmers but obviously it's carp and uh, carp that we're after obviously a barbel would be nice but i don't know if i'm fishing the right method for those there's definitely signs of fish out there so i'm just going to stick at it i'm getting indications so now it's just a case of turning those indications into fish on the bank <laughs> Well, I've only caught five skimmers up to now and there's bubbles all over the place out there. So I'm having a change. I know the fish are out there, so I'm just gonna try a different way of presenting the bait. I've switched to a method feeder. Okay, so this is just a normal sort of method feeder that you all know. All right, so I'm just gonna pop one of those on. It's only 15 gram in weight, so I think that's just gonna sit better on the, um, on the soft bottom. Okay, so I've just threaded that on. Again, it's a free running free running method feeder and that's going to go to a, a quick change uh, adapter here which I'm just tying on now everything else is the same just thread that through there lots of people ask me how many times I thread or I, I wrap this around I wrap it around six times okay so I've threaded that through and I go over six times so it's one two three four five six and then all I do then is thread oops just get hold of it properly thread that through the loop between the um, where you first initially threaded it through and then once that's gone through that loop I then thread that through back through that loop as well so that just ties it so it goes further away always wet your knots so I'll just wet that and then you can pull that tight always give it a test just to make sure it's going to hold and then we can trim it off you don't have to trim it too tight because this is going to be tucked away in the bead itself all right so that's all we've got now a quick change bead there or a quick change adapter just get the same existing hook length that we've been using thread that on 
Okay, so there you've got the, the method feeder then, free running to that quick change. Quick change adapter there. Okay, and I'm just I'm sure that this is going to be a better way of presenting the bait. So with the method feeder, <clears throat> I always like to use the mould. Okay, I like to put a few pellets in there initially. You can make a little hole with your finger if you wish to lay your hook bait in. Don't pr lay your hook bait in. And then more pellets on the top and then push your method feeder into that. A perfect mould every time. I just think that's going to be a better way of presenting that bait out there. So this is still clipped up at exactly the same spot. Hit the clip rod down. If you're fishing with a clip, get hit your clip in the position where your rod is going to be on the rest. Okay, because you don't want to hit the clip there and then have to move the feeder to get it back onto the rest, if that makes sense. Get the tip down, just to sink that line. Line on the top's not a big issue today because as you can see, there's no wind or anything, so it's not going to drag it or move the feeder or anything. But it's just a neater and tidier way of fishing it, just to make sure your line's down under the water and out of the way. Then when you're happy that the line is sunk, you can put the rod over onto the rest and wait for your bite. Indication there straight away. It's going to be really interesting now to see if this is going to be a better way of presenting it. As you can see, there's indications there straight away. I'm pretty sure there are skimmers out there, but it's so close to those lilies that there's got to be better fish cruising around. Well, that was a really fast bite. It's not a big fish. Managed to hold it. Not sure what this one is. It might be a little stocky or something, I think, this one. Let's have a look. Just on a yellow mini wafter, on a method feeder. It's amazing how quick these fish are. Especially when they take when they take the bait so close to those lilies. There we go, hooks come out in the net. You never know what you're gonna hook in here. There are, you know, F1s, I don't know if it's crucians in here, but there's stocky carp, proper carp, skimmers, tench, there's all sorts in here. Beautiful looking fish, great condition that one. So fast though, when you hook them. Because you're hooking them within, you know, a foot of of that lily bed. And that's where it's a case of hit and hold. So hopefully that change into the method feed has worked. Well, the peg has been a complete jacuzzi out there. It's just bubbling away. I think it's a very soft bottom there, and I think there are skimmers there as well. So what I've been doing is, over the last 20 minutes or so, I've been making little nuggets of pellets, just like that. And I've been putting them down this margin down here underneath this overhanging bush I've just dropped on it now and I'm getting little indication there we go <laughs> that one's come off I don't know if that was hooked right or not you obviously heard the drag going I've been putting little balls of pellets down there and that might be a cleaner bottom there I'm not getting bubbles coming up and things there so that might suggest it's a harder bottom to fish over and obviously this overhanging bush looks you know it does look very uh, very appealing but the bait hasn't come off or anything there so i'm just going to get that back down that edge that was a very very fast fish i don't think that was a, a big fish but i think it was a very fast fish but i don't even know if that was hooked right to be honest but we'll find out if there's any more down there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to rest that swim out there the reason why i've done this is because if they're mopping up all those pellets that have been going in and out there and they are small fish i'm just going to leave that alone now let them mop up what's there and hopefully they'll just move away whilst I have a look down this margin. So hopefully I've got the drag set, which is always advisable when you're fishing at such short range, because the takes can be quite violent, quite vicious, where you saw what that one was like. So always set your drag, and what I basically do is I tighten up to the feeder. So I tighten up to the feeder, you just see the tip bent, and then what I do is I just take some line off. You can hear that? Just so it's not bang tight, so you've got a bit of a sag in the line, if you want to call it that. Because if you're too direct, then you know that can cause problems with line bites if you get fish round around the feeder and it's a tight line. Whereas if it's a bit of a slack line, I'll just prefer that. And it's a little bit of uh, cushion there, there we go. See, I don't know if that's on or not. There we go, straight away that's gone to that. I bet it's another little stocky or an F1. But you saw how quick that was. But that was very much a hit and hold. I can't let it, run too far under there because there are roots and things down there very fast these fish they're not big fish but they're so fast they're really nice on this slim rod actually 
really nicely balanced. There we go. When you see the tip go like that, you don't know if it's a double figure fish or one of these, but that's why it's so exciting fishing at short range. He's hooked further, or oh, he's hooked in the other side of his mouth, this one. There we go, oops. So chunky, look at how chunky these are. Fantastic condition fish. Beautiful, just hooked in the corner of its mouth, this one, as you can see. Let's get the method feeder. That's just on a normal method feeder now. Okay, there we go. Fantastic way of fishing, really simple. Let's pop him back. I haven't got the keep net in today. As you know, for these session videos, I, I like, I prefer to put the fish straight back. But that's good because it's showing us that, you know, the rig's working and all that sort of thing. Um, and obviously having the opportunity to, to hold these fish is what I'm here for. So whilst these aren't big fish, there are roots and things underneath here. I do need to try and hook, you know, um, to hold the fish. And that's exactly what this session's all about. <laughs> Well, I've literally only just cast that back out and it's gone straight round again. As soon as it went in, it just feels as though they're nailing that method feeder or the pellets around the method feeder better than, uh, than a pellet feeder. But there we go, another very fast fish. There we go, it's just hooked in the corner of its mouth, that one. Let me show you that. There we go, just in the corner. I'm on the yellow mini wafter now. The last one was on the yellow as well. I have tried red, but I haven't had any signs on those. Just take that out, take that hook out. Pop that in the edge, another fantastically conditioned fish. Beautiful fish. Let's see if there's some more out there. I think that one's on. There we go. Method feed has definitely been better than uh, than the pellet feeder today. Well, this one's a very different fish. This one, much slower. It feels like a big bream. I don't actually know. It went on one quick run when I first upped it. But I honestly don't know. Is it a bream? Oh, beautiful fish, whatever it is. Is it an eyed? Well, look at that. There's a surprise. On the yellow mini wafter again. There's a nice surprise. Look at that. Beautiful. Never know what you're going to be hooking on these kind of venues. Stunning. Well, I completely understand that most people don't have the luxury to go out and have sessions like this where you can try kit out and certainly with new tackle as well. So I really hope you've enjoyed this bit of an insight into one of the sessions that I undertake almost weekly now just to try different bits of kit out. If you have enjoyed this insight, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you want to see more coaching tuition style videos, take a look at Patreon TV just there. That's my other channel. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you next time.